Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I'll talk to you about Decathlon, which is a, we can say quite old company now. We've been celebrating our 40 years anniversary last year. However, we've been going through a very deep uh, mutation for the past three years uh, at every level. I'll tell you about the company uh, just in few numbers, uh, because I don't know if everyone is familiar. A lot of people see it locally, so still think it's a small corporation, but we're actually quite big. We've been created in 1976 uh, by uh, Michel uh, Leclerc, and the family has been a family-owned company since. It hasn't changed. Now his son, Mathieu, took over the company a few years ago. We have uh, over 1,400 uh, stores, I think, because it's growing, we are opening pretty much a store every day now, uh, as we speak, so it's just increasing uh, very fast. Over 39 countries, and we have 80,000 collaborators around the world. Uh, as far as designers, we have 200 plus designers, uh, not centralized, they're spread in different sports, and we have uh, eight R&D headquarters uh, around France for now, and we're opening in Boston and different cities in the next few years. Uh, the most important number, the last but not the least, is the 84. 84 is the percentage of people saying they are very happy and they have fun to go to work uh, every Monday, every Monday at uh, Decathlon. So it's just incredible because it made us the most desirable corporation for the young generation in France. That being said, you realize that we are big and very comfortable. So the question is, how do we keep moving? How do we keep moving to stay in the game? Well, I guess the answer is very simple. We keep doing what we've done best for 40 years. We've been a user-centric corporation from the beginning. The next thing we have to do, though, it's moving from user-centric to an hybridation between user-centric and audience-centric. What I mean is, how many of you practice sports at least once a week in the room? And how many does practice, doesn't practice sports at all? Don't be ashamed. Well, see, this is what I never do focus group. It doesn't reflect the reality. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say if I take Europe as an example, we have 40% uh, of people practicing sports once a week. So that we know everything about. We've been gathering data and we've been user-centric on these people for the past 40 years. However, the 60% not practicing sports, we know absolutely nothing about them. So we've been only touching the tipping point of the iceberg, but we have no idea what's in people's mind when they don't practice sports, why they don't practice sports. The fact of moving to user-centric to audience-centric as well means we can reach the people watching sports, talking about sports, betting on sports, but not practicing, and we can know why they're not practicing. The second point we, we are working on is uh, uh, the experience. It's better to leave the experience rather than hearing about it. Uh, one of our bigger, biggest strengths is our store network. We have 1,400 stores across the world. However, if we don't pay attention, it could be our biggest weakness. Uh, a friend of mine working at the communication department in Decathlon worked in the food business industry for years. And he was telling me, uh, in the retail business for food, they've been throwing millions and millions at advertising campaign for turkey ham. Not meat in general, turkey ham. And uh, when I thought about it, I was like, well, it's pretty smart, actually, because it's much better to talk about industrial food rather than testing industrial food. But when you think about our core business, we've been doing the same exact thing. When it's the opposite, it's much better to experience sport rather than talking or hearing about it. So what we are trying to do is to switch our store network into not only a shopping place, but a place for experience where you could try any sport you think of. We actually have a great example in Italy a few hours from here in Villese. Uh, we opened a sport where you have a skating ramp, a climbing wall, a swimming pool. Everything you can think of, you can try it in the store right away. And, and this switch to experiential is, is the best thing to actually touch the 60% we never touch. You can go there with your kids because they need shoes for school, 
to play sports, well, you know, you say, oh, a golf simulator, maybe I can try, you know, and, and you can get hooked up to golf. Well, I don't wish you that because you might divorce later on, but... Uh, <laughs> Another point is uh, the digital world. Um, we also have the desire to open much smaller uh, stores, carrying less products. So how can you experience the sports in, in a smaller environment with less product to try? That's where the mix between reality and virtual reality becomes very interesting for us. Uh, I worked a long time uh, uh, on the golf products and we've been the first brand of Decathlon integrated golf simulators where people could actually try in a 10 square meter space the experience of golf. So this mixing between reality and digital is very important for us because this is the key to keep opening uh, stores in much smaller cities and much smaller surfaces. Well. All of that being said, the question is, how do we do it? Well, we do it by liberating the energy and by putting the decision-making process as close as the problem as we can. So, which means we've been decided to get rid of all the management structure. We don't have any bosses in the corporation. No one deciding for yourself, no one deciding for your mission. Uh, in some places, actually, you can even decide in Decathlon for your own salary. And, and why we've been doing that? Because we have a, a, a strong conviction that all the solutions to mute the business model of retail will come from the people on the ground. It won't come from the people on the top. So we only have one rule, actually, which is right now, don't follow any rule. And the reason why I've put this picture is because it's on, only uh, between advertising, it's my daughters. <laughs> and I can testify that they don't follow any rule. And I make sure they don't. Because as a father, it pushed me to give them meanings. If there is no rules, you need meaning in life. And it's very important. So this is how we are driving the corporation right now. And we took this turn in less than three years. So as I'm speaking, we are still trying, experimenting. We also have the right to fail in the corporation, which is part of the process. So some things I've shown you are successful, some others might fail. We're just in a big testing process as we speak. I'll show you a little video. Come here. We dream of improving people's lives through sports. We dream of a company built on the smile of its team members. No matter your culture. No matter where you come from. Or your difference of ability. No matter your fashion. No matter your gender. No matter your religion or your education. Forever. We have the freedom to decide. We are united forever. To be responsible. Have fun. We are.
We play the sports we love. We are spot users for users. We are the cattle. Always give me a chill. We are united forever. The reason why I wanted to show you this video is because um, a week ago, Michel Abalea, our CEO, we were talking about different things about how the management is working in the corporation, and he told me, Matt, I'm not your boss anymore. I'm like, yeah, okay, so am I my own boss? Like, no, the guy wearing this vest is your boss because he's the one on the ground. He's the one carrying your message to the users. And if he doesn't believe in your message, you failed. So your boss is actually all these people in this video. It's not Michel. So this is the big difference. And all the people you've seen in the videos are all co-workers or family of co-workers. We've also decided that every communication outside Decathlon will be with the people from Decathlon. No more models, no more uh, fake. I mean, my daughters always do some photo shoots for Decathlon. It's just carrying the message through Decathlon's people and through the sales people. So this is the mutation we are going through and it's uh, pretty exciting. And uh, I've been in this corporation for five years and it's just being a blast to be part of such a big change. Thank you very much for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you.